So seeing that the appointed time has arrived, the chair opens up the meeting of the Mashpee Planning Board today, Wednesday, August 17th, 2022, 7 p.m. We're holding our meeting at the Wakoyat Meeting Room at Mashpee Town Hall, 16 Great Neck Road North, Mashpee, Massachusetts. We're being uh, videographed and recorded. We might be photographed as well. Um, we're being broadcast live on local channel 18 and streamed live on Mashpee TV, I'm sorry, Mashpee Town of Mashpee website, www.mashpeema.gov backslash channel hyphen 18. So I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight. Um, and first order of business, please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of, the of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just to start off, I see some new faces here today or maybe people that haven't been here for a little bit. Um, this is a public meeting. Um, so the chair will call for public comment on each item and then there's public comment at the end. Um, if you'd like to sign up for public comment, there's a sheet. Um, there are two public hearings, one at 710 and one at 720 and one, oh, there's three, and one at 730. So at those times, I open up those public uh, hearings. Um, normally, what happens at a public hearing, um, there's a presentation uh, by the project proponent, uh, questions from the planning board, uh, kind of a review from our town engineer and our town planner, and then I open it up to the public for a public comment. There is one item um, here tonight that's gonna be a mandatory referral to the Cape Cod Commission. So at that time, um, we will not be taking public comment on that uh, matter because that's gonna go right to the Cape Cod Commission, which has its own public hearing process. That all has to be concluded before it comes back to us for our own public hearing. But we'll get back uh, to that um, at 7.20. Um, next order um, of business is the minutes from August 3rd, 2022. So I did have some notes on those. Um, on page four under the EDIC meeting, it says priority was given to the town planner in cooperation with sewer. So I think that's supposed to say that the town planner said that, are, that areas would be prioritized based on coordination with the sewering of the town. I'm sure Evan really wants to be in charge of sewering the town too. <laughs> On page six, third paragraph, uh, Ms. Wagan asked the commission if there was a way to limit large trucks and vehicles on roads. And they had stated no. Yeah. And then on page 16, Ms. Wagan brought the conversation back to the board, the second paragraph. She inquired about supporting the town in budgeting for street cleaning. It's supposed to be tree replacement. <laughs> I don't know if I said street cleaning, but I know I meant tree replacement. I might have had my mask on at the time. <laughs> so anyways, those are my three uh, notes. Anybody else have any? No. I'd, uh, I'd accept a motion to accept as amended. So me. So I'll have that. An amendment. As amended. As amended. So Dennis first, Michael second. second. I need more discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, because that was 24 and I pages. And I abstain because I wasn't here. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Um, okay, so we have a um, few more minutes, five more minutes until um, our public hearing at 710. Can we do the new business in five minutes, which is consideration of amendments to the Planning Board Special Permit Regulations? I think so. Okay, so why don't you take us through that? Uh, so I, I provided you with draft language for the subdivision rules and regulations public hearing. I'm proposing the same language be added to our fee schedule for our special permit regulations. 
The purpose of this amendment is merely to clarify that when the inspection account, uh, which is held in escrow for the purposes of having Ed inspect special permit projects, is drawn down to a value of less than 50% of the 5,000 taken in, that when that when that uh, when those funds are drawn down to below that threshold, uh, we will be seeking replenishment of that account from uh, the project proponent. Um, this is the existing practice, but I felt it should be clarified in our regulations. Uh, so you'll, if you review the, the subdivision language, I'm proposing the same language be included in the special permit regulation fee schedule. Is there any comment from board members on this matter? Seeing none, I'd take a, um, a, a motion to uh, approve the um, amendment as presented by the town planner. So moved. Second. I have a, a, a motion and a second. Any di further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Okay. So that passes. Thank you, Evan. Um, the request for covenant release at subdivision known as Casper Circle, Steve and Joyce Hines. Yes, the Hineses have uh, submitted a uh, check for a cash security for the total value established by the board. It has been deposited and an account has been established. Um, I don't know if you've already voted to release, but you I would re humbly request the board vote to release uh, the subject lots from the covenant and, and execute the form E I have here. I voted to release the covenant as long as we have what you got your hand. The security is indeed in place. Is there a second? Second. second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? You can just sign on the second row, so right hand side at the top. Okay, I have a pencil. I have a red pen. Yeah. <laughs> so I sign on the top line. Yeah, you sign on the top. It's one of the privileges of the chair. <laughs> hey, can I say something? Yes, you can. The, the, the thing that's public here and that's going to the Cape Cod Commission is a grocery store. So anybody that's here for that, we can't really speak on it, but can they ask any questions? I'd rather they didn't just because um, so it, it could be a procedural uh, error. And I don't want to jeopardize anything. Yeah, because um, I see a lot of people that are from I know. that area. I think. Um, Go ahead, sign and pass on. If any Adam folks Chair. have questions, they can absolutely contact me in, in my office. Can we know? Is it? Are we allowed to know what the grocery store is? So we're supposed to continue the matter. We're supposed to continue the matter without with no comment. Um, it it it, it it could be a procedural error on behalf of the town um, and um, we don't want to jeopardize or cause any liability for the town on that. Um, it's my understanding there will be um, public hearing once it goes to the Cape Cod Commission. There will be a, at least one public hearing. I don't know how many. Okay. Um, I think if people are really, really, really concerned, they should send their comments to the town planner. That's different than sending your comments to the planning board. Um, send them to the town planner, um, and he will advise you where that comment should go at that point. OK, 710. So seeing that the appointed time has arrived, the chair opens up the public hearing at 710, consideration of amendment to the Mashby rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land Section 13 fee schedule. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 41, Section 81Q, the Mashby Planning Board will hold, will open a public hearing on Wednesday, August 17th, 2022 at 710 in the Wakoyat Meeting Room, Mashby Town Hall, first floor, 16 Great Neck Road, North Mashby, Mass. To consider an update to the Mashby rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land to clarify in the application fee schedule that when the $5,000 peer review slash inspection fee is drawn down to a value of less than 50% in the applicant, sorry, with a value of less than 50%, the applicant shall require 
be required to reseed, that means refund <laughs> the fund, to the uh, full $5,000 value. Submitted by Mary Wagan, Chair, Mastery Planning Board. The publication dates were Friday, July 29th, 2022, and Friday, August 5th, 2022. Um, so, Evan, do you want to bring us through that? Sure. Um, same as uh, the special permit regulation amendment, but um, uh, this, I because there was a public hearing, I provided a, a clear memo for where the language would be inserted into the subdivision rules and regulations. Um, for your review and consideration, again, the purpose of this is, is merely to clarify for uh, project proponents that when their uh, accounts for inspections and peer review are drawn down to the value of $2,500 or less, 50% of the total value, that the planning department will be following up with them to collect a check to refund the account to 100%. So this is, again, for clarity's sake, uh, it's the common practice and all of our inspection accounts are fully funded, but I wanted to be clear. Any comments yep. from uh, board members? Um, any comment from the public? Seeing none, uh, the chair will take a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Is there a second? Second. 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 Um, any discussion on closing the public hearing? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody saying no? Abstaining? Okay. So now we need to take a vote to amend uh, the Mashpee rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land section 13 as described by the town planner. Is there a motion to do that? I make a motion that we can we consider the amendments to the Mashpee rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land section 13 fee schedule pursuant to what our town planner has said. And, and amend it, amend. yep. Mm -hmm. Is there a second to that? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? Okay, it's unanimous. So that's our first public hearing. So we have eight more minutes. Okay. To the next one. Discussion of issues at Aqua Highlands subdivision and condition of the special permit relative to traffic. Is that something you're prepared to discuss? Uh, there's no new information. I, I do still need to follow up with the neighborhood relative to their requirement to petition the select board for the stop signs, but um, I'll prioritize that for next week. Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip the LCP because that won't be done in eight minutes. Um, regarding affordable and workforce housing, um, I attended the meeting of the Mashpee Affordable Housing Committee I think it was last week. <laughs> I think it was last week. Um, and uh, I had sent them an email in early June asking, um, you know, how they wanted to coordinate um, our efforts to create affordable and workforce housing here in town and uh, to remind them for uh, their comments on the LCP chapter, uh, in particular the existing conditions. Um, so in uh, their minutes, I don't know, Evan, if they sent you that set of minutes from June? No. If not. So they had um, a meeting in June um, where they, well, no, it was the meeting with uh, you and the people from Weston and Sampson. Oh, when we presented to them? Was that April? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I think that's April. So that set of minutes has all their comments. That's what they told me. That, that they, is true. Yeah. So that that was their submission of comments. Okay. Was that? Yeah, and um, the chair, Alan Isbitz, is is continuing to work on the existing condition section. Great. And I asked him to uh, send that along in a timely manner yeah. because we're ready to kind of move on from the existing condition parts of all the chapter into the new stuff. Um, so that's the code. That's the piece about the coordination of the affordable housing committee. I am going to try to go to all those meetings. Um, if, if other people want to come, that's great. Um, they do have a lovely uh, public comment period at the end and are very engaged uh, committee. So, um, Also, I, told, I let them know that the planning board was going to be doing an, a workshop on the ADU bylaw, that's accessory dwelling units, um, sometime in October. And um, I, I think they have a date of October 18th for somebody from Community Development Partnership that's gonna come and talk 
to them about their ADU program. Um, and I think that was October 18th, so I, f I was like, oh, well, why don't we do it all together? Um, I let them know that, um, you know, Evan is available, hopefully Housing Assistance Corporation can come, hopefully the building commissioner can come that night. So if there's people in the audience that actually want uh, to discuss their own property, they can get a jump start. Does anybody have any comments about affordable housing and workforce housing from the board? Um, I am going to take public comment on this matter if there's anybody in the audience that wants to talk about affordable and workforce housing. Um, then I'm going to skip the Clean Water Initiative because there's some stuff to talk about that will be a little bit lengthy. And go to the Chairman's Report. Um, I did go to the Board of Selectmen, uh, I think it's last week again, I was busy last week, um, and reported, I gave them an update on the Local Comprehensive Plan and encouraged um, everyone to participate. Um, the only thing I think I might have misspoken because I might have said that our meeting with the uh, tribe was September 11th and it's actually September 21st. I think it is the 11th. <laughs> I'd have to double check. I'm fairly confident it's the 11th though. You told me the 11th. I feel like it's the 11th. I thought you changed it. I don't know. Well, we've changed it a number of times. Okay. It changed three times well, in August, so. It's September 11th or the 21st. Pencil it in your, pencil it in your. It's a Sunday, whichever day is a Sunday. It's a Sunday. Sunday. If two. September 21 is not a Sunday, it's not that day. Well, hoping it's a rainy day so everybody will come. Um, okay, we have three more minutes. Um, I'm gonna, so that's Chairman's report. I'm gonna skip uh, the Town Planner's report. Um, We'll go right to board member committee reports. Cape Cod Commission, not, nothing that I know of, no report. Um, com Community Preservation Committee, um, I did um, ask a public comment to the Board of Selectmen that um, the Community Preservation Committee convene. I know that there's at least one application um, that's been submitted and it was by the planning department and the conservation uh, department for the purchase of eight acres at 751 Route 130. Correct. Um, that abuts what conservation? Pickerel Cove. Pickerel Cove uh, conservation area. Um, so it's, it is an application the planning board, um, you know, recommends and is, is uh, time sensitive. Um, so I, I've, I've asked that it be convened. Um, uh, design review. Right here. Uh, the design review met uh, Tuesday, August 16th. Um, the project was at 502 Main Street. The business name is um, WCR Inc. DBA Napa Auto Parts Cape Cod. And uh, the, um, the applicant was seeking a change of use to allow operation of Napa Auto Parts store under two sections of the zoning bylaw. Uh, it's a, a, a commercial and a wholesale operation. And they were looking to uh, put up two signs. One sign is the picture they showed of the Napa sign, which is out at uh, Hyannis, which now is apparently that facility is closed. That picture, uh, 10 foot by seven and a half would be too big would be in violation of our sign. So in a sign, on a freestanding sign, our vote, vote zoning says we can have one sign not exceeding 40 square feet, close, not closer than five feet to any lot line, and you can't block the sight line, which a 10-foot sign apparently would block. So they're coming back, so it's uh, approved pending, you know, a new sign set back and street and also for your information appropriate lighting you're not allowed to light the sign right. from the interior because that's kind of you know gaudy i guess for mashby standards <laughs> thank you okay thank you karen um plan review uh plan review meant to review the same project um 
change of use, no modifications to the existing uh, site plan, no exterior modifications to the building that are proposed. Um, any work is happening inside of the building. Um, this is in the C3 district, uh, but the initial permit was issued by the Board of Appeals prior to the establishment of the district, so the Board of Appeals would be the permit granting authority to approve of the modification. Um, there were some comments that were code related um, and the, com the plan review committee approved conditional upon having some questions answered between the fire department and building department. Um, and we anticipate that those uh, matters be rectified. Nothing major, um, minimal code related issues and uh, we recommended approval on those conditions. Evan, where's the location? It's the, it's the former uh, like fit club for women. On 130. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, Good. okay. Yeah. yeah. It, it was proposed to be a storage facility. That plan did not follow through. Mm -hmm. uh, and Napa Auto Parts is proposing to occupy the facility. Okay. Mainly, pr primarily, it's Napa's a, a wholesale facility. It's mm -hmm. not a retail facility. They have like a 300-ish square foot portion of the store. Where you could walk in and get wiper blades or something. But it's it's really a wholesale operation. Okay. Good. Thank you. But you can go there if you're just a regular customer looking you, for a spark plug. You could. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, their retail portion of the store in the 9,000 square foot facility is about 300 square feet. Okay. Environmental Oversight Committee? No meeting. Historic District Commission? No meeting. Harbor Management Plan Committee? Nothing. Did we, did we uh, pass on the information? The, that, yeah, okay. they, I don't believe they've met yet. Yeah. Okay. All right. You'll hear from them. I'll, I, I know Chris, Chris will find me. Great. Yeah, so John, uh, uh, they were looking for somebody to sit on that I saw committee. That in the yeah. yeah. So. Good for you, Mike. <laughs> okay, so seeing that the appointed time has arrived, the chair opens up the 720 public hearing. The applicant is Longfellow Design Bill. The location is 647 Falmouth Road, FKA, um, 9 Shellback Way. Um, the applicant seeks approval of a special permit to construct a 12,500 square foot commercial building to be used for retail grocery store on a four acre plus or minus parcel addressed as 647 Falmouth Road located generally between Job's Fishing Road and Shellback Way with a frontage along Route 28. This application is made pursuant to sections uh, 174-24C1 under, and under section 174-25E1 and 17425E2 of the Mashpee Zoning Bylaw. This proposal triggers a mandatory referral to the Cape Cod Commission for review as a development of regional impact. Now I have to uh, read in the public hearing too. Pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40A Section 8, the Mashpee Planning Board will open a public hearing on Wednesday, August 17th, 2022 at 7.20 in the Wakoyat Meeting Room, Mashpee Town Hall, first floor, Great 16 Great Neck Road North, Mashpee, Massachusetts, to consider an application made by Longfellow Design Bill to construct a commercial building to be used for retail grocery sales on a four acre plus or minus parcel, Assessor's Map 81, Lot 132, located at property addressed as 647 Falmouth Road, Mashpee, Mass. This application is made pursuant to sections 174-24C1 and under section 174-25E1 and section 174-25E2 of the Mashpee Zoning Bylaw. This proposal tr triggers a mandatory referral to the Cape Cod Commission for review as a develop development of regional impact. Thus, no deliberation will occur at this meeting, nor will the board receive public comment until the Cape Cod Commission refers the project back to the Planning Board for local review. So do we have to vote for it to be a mandatory? Um, you need to vote to refer the project pursuant to it being a mandatory referral, if you would, and then um, continue the public hearing. So uh, vote to continue it? Um, the public vote hearing? to refer, and okay. then if you could vote to continue until it's referred back. Two okay. votes, please. So I'd take a motion to uh, refer this project to the Cape Cod Commission for review as a development of regional impact. Second. Oh. Second. Okay. So who did the motion? And then Michael. Michael, Michael, and seconded by Karen. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone voting against or abstaining? Okay. So it's unanimous. Um, the chair will accept a motion to continue this uh, public hearing 
um, to a time when the Cape, after which the Cape Cod Commission refers the project back to the Planning Board for review. No B. Is there a second? Second. second. Any, aye. any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Can I just make a statement for the audience who are here from the matter? Anybody opposed or abstaining? Sorry. No. So the chair recognizes the town planner. Uh, for the folks who are, are attending tonight with interest in that particular matter that was just referred to the Cape Cod Commission, um, I will send out an additional mailing at, at such time when the application is referred back and when the public hearing will reopen uh, with the planning board here. It'll be a number of months, but um, I'll make sure that you're well aware and, and noticed of when the public hearing will reopen in this, uh, in this audience. They have a public hearing at the Cape Cod Commission. Yes. That you, you could go on a tour. Oh, just bring your mic a little bit closer. You go to the Cape Cod Commission public hearing on this if you have something to, you want to state to them about this project. So it probably be a good idea to go to that public hearing too. And Evans could probably tell you when it is scheduled to be. And I guess one more statement is that um, you will receive correspondence from the Cape Cod Commission relative to the public hearings that will be held um, for their regional review. Um, and there was one other item, and it has slipped my mind. Now, is it the same 300 foot? I believe that it is. OK. So um, we believe that anybody who got a town of Yarmouth notice will also get a Cape Cod Commission notice. A town of Mashpee notice, correct. De oh, sorry. and then uh, I remember. Wrong La town. Uh, the last item is I'm sh some of you are probably wondering why you've received three notices for a public hearing um, if you are a butter to this project. This was withdrawn twice previously. Um, and has been uh, refiled again. Obviously, this is a third, ref second or third referral we're making to the Cape Cod Commission. The reason for the withdrawals previously were due to procedural, um, not errors, but there were t uh, regulatory timelines that were not able to be met due to the application not being able to be certified complete by the Cape Cod Commission. My office has confirmed that the commission is in, uh, the application is satisfactory and that uh, the commission will be in a position to determine that the application is indeed complete so we do not expect a additional withdrawal and that the process will will, will see itself out at, at this point. So um, apologies for the confusion, but we do want to make sure you're well informed of the process moving ahead. And, and we so appreciate that you all came tonight. And, um, Madam Chair. Yes. There is a discrepancy in the development of regional impact referral form. It says the project proposed 13,229 square feet, but on the... Uh, meeting agenda, it says 12,500 square feet. I can confirm that the proposed building at this time is the 13,000. It has grown since the initial submission, so the 12,500 must have been recycled language from a previous agenda. But the current facility as shown on our, the site plan submitted with this package is 13,000 square feet and change. Thank you. OK, so do we have to sign something? I do need a referral. Um, it, I probably don't have it single-sided. Can I get your signature after the meeting, Mary? Yep. Thank you. Is this what you signed? Yeah. But I just it was see. Seven thirty, right? I have it double-sided. I'm sorry, I'm reading that. Okay, we don't have to check any boxes on that. All right. Seeing that the appointed time has arrived, um, so, so now I'm gonna go on to the next item, um, which is a 7.30 public hearing. Seeing that the appointed time has arrived, the chair opens up the 7.30 public hearing. The applicant is Marcelo Malegne. <clears throat> can, you, can you help me with that last Malegne, one? Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, Malegne. Man that, man that, Malegne, thank you, Malegne. Uh, Forest Road, LLC. The location is 532 Main Street, Assessor's Map 26, Block 6. The applicant requests consideration for approval of a nine-lot definitive subdivision plan of land consisting of approximately 18.05 acres located on Main Street, Route 130, between Nicoletta's Way and Echo Road. 
So we have the project proponent here, so I will recognize them. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the board, Attorney Christopher Corain representing the applicant. Um, I did submit a request this afternoon for a continuance of the September 7th meeting. We're still working on a final agreement with the, with the owners of Nicoletta's Way. Um, obviously, the, the board's preference is for us to work with them, so that's what we're doing. So it isn't quite across the finish line yet, but I feel like we're, we're getting close. So, you know, before withdrawing, I'd like to ask for the continuance, and then, you know, hopefully by the 7th, I will uh, be able to withdraw this and not have to request any further continuances. But that's where we're at. I think we're close, but, you know, we're, we're not quite there yet. So. I have no problem giving continue. Okay, so I'll take a motion to continue this public hearing to September 7th. Is there anything on the agenda? No. Okay. So move. September uh, 7th at 710. Don't move. There a second? Second. second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay, great. Right. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you every couple of weeks. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you again in a couple. All right. <laughs> I miss your father. <laughs> I'll, I'll let him know. Yeah, I know. Oh. He misses you guys too. <laughs> all right, great. Um, okay, so going back to the agenda, I think the next thing is the local comprehensive plan. Um, so is, is there anybody in the audience that wanted to talk about the local comprehensive plan? If not, I'll just, I'll just go right through. Okay. So Evan has assessments for us for the human services and the solid and hazardous waste management chapters. It's okay with the board. So if you gonna... wouldn't mind going right through it. It's okay with the board. I'm going to start with the solid waste because it's easier for me to run through. Okay. I, I did more of a narrative um, narrative memorandum, which was a deviation from how I've done the previous, but um, it was more organic for me to do it that way in the way we engaged with the Human Services Committee and the conversations I had with Gail Wilson. Uh, so I'm going to start with hazardous waste, if that's okay with you. Yes. Start with the goals, and I'll, I'll go through um, accomplishments or missed targets, et cetera. So the goals established in the 1998 Comprehensive Plan for Solid and Hazardous Waste were as follows. Uh, to minimize the per capita volume of solid waste in the town of Mashpee, requiring incineration or landfill. To ensure that solid waste disposal in Mashpee is done in an environmentally safe and cost-effective manner. And the third goal, to ensure that hazardous materials and wastes generated and used by Mashpee households, businesses, and institutions are used, stored, transported, and disposed of in an environmentally safe manner. Um, I composed this memorandum in, in coordination with uh, the Department of Public Works Director, Catherine Laurent. Um, and again, like I have done previously, I, I've shown the proposed actions of the 19 actions from the 1998 document in bold and sub bullets are status of, of where we are uh, in the existing condition. Uh, first was a goal was to increase the type of materials available for recycling. Um, the DPW makes figures available from the transfer station on the types of waste slash recyclables being managed. Um, DPW estimates that about 25% of recyclable materials are processed. There have been new materials added to the list of accepted recyclables at the transfer station since 1998, and that list of, of accepted materials is available online on the DPW's website. Um, there was another goal of increasing the avail waste. increasing availability of recycling facilities at the transfer station, and the town uh, continues to provide access to the recycling facilities at the station during the same hours of operation as the disposal facilities. There are no unique days for the acceptance of, of certain materials. So any, any such day you could go and mm -hmm. deal with your mattresses and deal with your metal uh, material and obviously canned goods, plastics, et cetera, paper, fiber. Uh, develop educational and promotional programs. Um, and the DPW director noted that there have been general education programs done by the DPW over the years to develop educational and promotional programming, such as brochures and inf informational sheets available to the public. Um, and, but ultimately, though, recycling rem remains not a mandate and relies on voluntary action from the public. So um, continued education and, uh, is, is something that should be prioritized. Generally, people are well informed, according to the DPW director, about what materials are accepted, and the staff ensure that there is appropriate disposal. 
Uh, it was stated that there have been no issues regarding the rejection of loads due to recycling contamination. There was a goal of uh, developing a direct economic incentive for recycling. Uh, parentheses, full cost accounting and unit pricing. I'm not sure what I meant there. I apologize. I'll have to follow up with you. But there are Board of Health regulations in place to incentivize recycling along with food waste composting opportunities and programs to make recycling more commercially viable. The town has tracked the cost benefit of recycling as a means of demonstrating its value. The market conditions have continued to improve over time, making recycling more feasible. The DPW has provided its spreadsheets to my office of recyclable material diverted from the waste stream for analysis. There still remains capacity issues though, and as there are no viable landfill sites in the Cape, and there is a substantial cost associated with hauling waste off Cape. There was a proposal or a goal in 1998 to have the Board of Health or the health agent part of the proposed staff site plan review committee. We do operate a site plan review committee and the health agent is a full voting and participating member of that committee. A goal was to begin a planning process to consider barriers at ancient ways as one method to prevent illegal dumping. Uh, the town has now gated most ancient ways to prevent illegal dumping, yet it has continued to occur in other places. There is a cost benefit to this as the restricted access has been effective at mitigating the issues of dumping, but access to vehicles has been removed. Um, a goal, there was an, an additional goal of considering alternatives to the $300 fine for illegal dumping. Um, and there have been no alternatives to the fine for illegal dumping explored. There remains a significant challenge of catching perpetrators of illegal dumping. So um, catching those in the act is the biggest challenge. The goal was to have the town provide for the storage and collection of recyclables at town-owned facilities. Um, the town has access to mixed recycling receptacles at all town facilities. Another was to begin a planning process to get the town's procurement officer to start buying some materials that are made from recycled materials. Uh, in 1997, the selectmen, select board adopted the following policy. For all purchases of printing and writing paper for in-house use or custom printed materials by professional printers, including copier paper, offset paper, forms, stationary envelopes, tablets, notepads, and file folders, the minimum content standard shall be no less than 20% post-consumer recycled materials. This minimum standard may be increased to 30% beginning December 31st, 1998 to match federal standards. I do not know what the current standards are or if our policies are consistent with those standards, but that is something I can follow up on. Um, lastly, adopt local hazardous materials slash waste regulations. Uh, the transfer station has indeed adopted rules and regulations that are found on the town's website and I've included the URL in my memo. There are recommendations and goals identified in the 1998 document relative to facilities and program recommendations. One's being such uh, so that the day-to-day -day operations of the transfer station be managed by a private contractor. Uh, the on-site staff at the transfer station are comprised of town employees paid by the town, but the collection services are contracted out. So the, the employees there on the day-to-day -day are, are town employees, but the, uh, we contract out the hauling services where the, where the waste is taken uh, out of town. Do not adopt annual waste limits in the renewal contract with CMAS. Um, there are no limits to waste under current contract, according to the DPW director. Uh, but the DPW makes an effort to set the cost of dump stickers equal to the fees for managing the facilities. There was an additional goal of considering undergoing a renovation and expansion of the transfer station by build out defined in the 1998 document, which again is around that 15,000 uh, year round resident number. Uh, there have been no major renovations or expansions to the transfer station aside from minor changes in receptacles and waste bins to accommodate the increase in accepted materials. So again, no major renovations since 98. The goal was of, uh, an additional goal was to evaluate the feasibility of expanding waste management services to accommodate greater curbside collection. There are currently no public curbside collection services other than for town facilities for which the town maintains a contract. And lastly, uh, goals relative to coordination with other towns, the county, and other agencies. One being coordinate program changes or improvements to household hazardous waste collection day with the town of Falmouth. 
This, uh, this need is currently being met via reciprocal collection services. The town participates in a hazardous waste collection day with the rest of the Upper Cape and hosts one such day at the Mashpee Middle High School. Uh, continue to work closely with the town of Sandwich to process our newspapers for recycling along with other materials. There was no known cooperation with the town of Sandwich in this regard to the knowledge of the DPW director. Work with Oda, another one, work with Otis, I guess now uh, JBCC, on the proposed regional sludge treatment facility to ensure they can treat sludge generated from publicly owned septage and or sewage treatment plants. No cooperation with Otis has occurred to treat sludge from publicly owned septage and or sewer treatment plants. Okay. Um, goal, develop a lined landfill for difficult to manage waste following the closure of the town landfill in 1998. It is prohibited by state law to develop such a landfill. Now, now it is. Work with the state to receive grants for continuing and developing waste management programs. As an example, home composting bins. Um, each year the town does go through a process of grant applications is all I wrote. I do not know which and I can follow up with you on, on which and if any funds have been received. That is the assessment for solid and hazardous waste. Sounds good. Any comments? Yes, Karen. Um, <clears throat> on goal two, um, I remind everybody that Brian Baumgartel spoke one evening and said that this is becoming a big problem because solid waste, they're looking desperately for places where it's going to go because they don't want to. From the wastewater treatment facility, the yeah. sludge? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's sludge or is sludge the same as solid waste? I don't think so. No. 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 no I solid think he was waste talking is a problem. About the they PFAS? Deal with it? And they don't want it because there are contaminants in the solid waste. Yes. And you know they're not easily made into fertilizer because you don't. Anyway, that was one thing. Oh, I see. They used to be composted into fertilizer. And well, that's they, what they can't now because they're contaminated with. Well, that was the the intimation that okay. he was saying they need clean, clean solid waste. <laughs> no, there's too much heavy metals and, and uh, medicines in the solid waste. Okay. Years ago, they used to ship it off to Colorado, and they used it on the fields. And then Colorado, the, the, the federal yep. government said, wait a minute, you got to check that. Right. And it was working fine. There was no people getting sick over it or nothing. And they grew corn that fed the cows and stuff. But once they stopped, that's why Massachusetts and a lot of states have trouble with the solid waste. And that's why I've been saying we should get together with the whole Cape, with the sewer system, because right. we're going to have problems. East, we're going to have 15 towns fighting. Where are we going to put oh, this solid it. waste? <clears throat> and the price is going to go <clears throat> sky high because <clears throat> the person hauling it off is... It, I see. It, we're going to be competing it. against each other instead of trying to yeah, get a price I don't for everything. Understand Nobody wants to somebody else take charge. You know, yeah. We all want to be... You know. But if we're combined, it's easy to get rid of one batch instead of 15 towns. Yeah. The, the other thing about um, the dumping, I've seen that, and it, it's really upsetting to see, you know, woods with dumping mattresses and garbage in there. Alternatives <clears throat> to the $300 fine for illegal dumping, number one, you could put a critter camera in there. I've used it myself. I was just going to say that's a good and idea. And secondly, what would be a penalty as opposed to $300 fine? Deprive the person of a beach sticker for a year or something something that wouldn't cost the town anything, but would be kind of punitive for dumping, you know, depending on what they're dumping. I don't know. I'd rather see a thousand dollar fine. Comments on that, or is it just amongst yourselves? So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this uh -huh. comment, and then I'm gonna go to you, okay? You. All right. <laughs> and, and the last, I have a question for Evan. Uh, the day-to-day -day on page two, operations at the transfer station, possibly managed by a private contractor. That's a program rec recommendation. <clears throat> Why would this be advantageous? Because we wouldn't be able to control the price. Truthfully, I don't know. OK. I don't know. I mean, I don't believe it was found to be advantageous, such as the existing condition being That was in 98. Staffed. Yeah, this right. was from 1998. Different time. <laughs> right. Yeah, so um, uh, I don't know what the benefit was perceived to have been back then. It could have just had public support. Maybe it was more <clears throat> cost effective than having uh, numerous full-time employees. Yeah. But, you know, obviously the existing condition is such that we staff the, the transfer station ourselves. Well, and over the years, they've gone back, looking at contracts back and forth to see if it's more beneficial to go outside or 
I'm not so sure. Obviously, it's probably a cost. Benefit. Yeah. So um, the, uh, I have three things that I would like to uh, have you research or Weston and Samson research for sure. the, you know, our update on this chapter. One is the Cape Cod Commission recently released policy recommendations about solid waste management on the Cape. Um, so we should get that. Um, I know they will come and do a presentation uh, if we want. Um, and it's all, it's all focusing on getting the organics out of our waste stream. That's our big savings, is compostable items. And they did a study that showed that uh, sending it off Cape for processing in New Jersey would be cheaper and have a, a, a smaller carbon footprint than doing it locally. So it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to hear how they came to that conclusion. Um, I know. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, they did. So anyways, uh, the next thing is um, we might want to look at what are the uh, best practices in other communities that have, uh, you know, decreased illegal dumping uh, on, uh, you know, these ancient ways. Ancient ways are really important for our Native American uh, neighbors because of hunting and gathering. And um, when roads are blocked, it, the access to those hunting and gathering grounds is limited. So, um, um, you know, you know, I have this idea of you know having them sign out a fob, you know, to let themselves in to those gate those gated areas. But there must be some other community that's figured this out. Um, and also regarding um, recycling is not mandated. That bullet point might not be mandated by the town, but I think there's a state statute that says you cannot throw out um, recyclable materials. Um, and um, what's sad is we have a lot of condominiums that don't offer recycling uh, uh, dumpsters or, bin or bins on their own property. So, you know, uh, it, it's something to think about an action item kind of requiring or in, it's kind of doing an incentive for condominium associations here in town to have that um, uh, bin at the on-site. Sir, did you want to say something? Come on up and it, we're going to ask you to come state your name and your address and use the mic so everybody at home can hear you. Uh, yeah. so, my name is Joseph Burnett. I, I live 27 Gunters Lane. And I, I wanted to address the illegal dumping. A couple years ago, we had some seniors at the Mashpee High School. And for the senior class project, they were looking at some of these uh, cleaning up the trails. And the, what they, they run the trails, mountain biking and stuff like that. There's trash everywhere in the, in the backwoods. Uh -huh. So we started with actually going and contacting the DPW. We were looking for something that could be done. We were going to have a cleanup day, go back there, pull some of the stuff out. We were looking for whether there were vouchers or anything that could be given um, so we could actually haul the trash and not have to pay for all the trash that we picked up. Everything that we looked at, we hit roadblocks in, in every area. Um, when we look at the fees that are associated with throwing away a TV, a flat screen, it's a disposable society. People go to the dump, they know that they have to pay for these things, so they just throw them out the back of a pickup truck on drive-bys. You see it all over the Cape. It's not just Mashby. But our DPW ends up picking up the stuff anyway. So why not have vouchers or do some sort of advertising for a pickup or, or something? Because mm -hmm. if you're going to get it anyway, you're not catching them by fines. You can say that you're going to take a beach sticker away for a year, but mm -hmm. most people that are throwing stuff out of the back of a truck don't care about your beach sticker, yeah. right? I, I mean, if you make it easier for somebody to get rid of something, and even if that means sending a truck on a Tuesday around through neighborhoods to pick stuff up, some people will take advantage of it, but it's just like, um, people are hard pressed, and, and when others ask for help, people are there to give them help. Even though you're strapped for money, you see somebody a little worse off, and, and you give a little bit. So people, I believe, are generally good. They're not going to say, hey, I'm going to call the town of Mashpee to get rid of this TV. You know, 
the voucher program or a pickup or something, mm -hmm. um, somebody might say, hey, I, I would rather donate $20 for two vouchers, all right, and, and mm -hmm. get my dump sticker, do a voucher donation, and have that voucher go to somebody that, you know, maybe doesn't have the 50 bucks for the mm -hmm. mattress and, and the, you know, if they're moving out of an apartment or something. We looked at it a couple years ago and we moved on to other senior class projects because this one mm -hmm. was just one roadblock after another after another. But if you get one of the GPS from our conservation, you can go out there, you can do geo tags with the GPS on, on yep. it, it, it's like all that stuff is there to identify it. We even took cell phones and took photos of all this stuff. It's, it's all out there. It's so much in the backwoods that you don't see, mm -hmm. but the stuff up front becomes noticeable and ugly. And, and we couldn't do anything about it. If we picked it up and put it in our trucks, we were gonna have to go over there and, and pay for it at the dump to get rid of it. So it became the deterrent there. It's like, the harder we work, the more we're gonna have to pay. That's and, interesting. So why don't we put know, down a little note right about there. an action item that there's some type of uh, stipend or voucher uh, program for free disposal, um, you know, especially for a group that's willing to go in and pick it up, um, that the, kind of stuff. You, the, the, the mountain bikers, there's some beautiful trails all yep. around Mashby that connect down into Falmouth and into Sandwich. It's amazing what we have out there, but nothing is worse than coming around a corner and then seeing a dishwasher and a microwave and a big screen TV, you know? It, it, it's it's just one of those things. We can't control people, you know, but what we can do is, is just give it a path to make it a little bit more easier and a little bit more accessible. Because people are always gonna look for the easy right. way out. Right and that's the 10 o'clock drive at night and, and, and off into the woods, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna catch them on trail cams. You're not gonna deter it with beach stickers and all that. It's, there, there's gotta be another way. And if we bring awareness to it, I think that somebody might just pick up the phone and say, hey, I have all this stuff, <coughs> yep. you know? Good. That's great. Yes, Karen. What do you think about, what is your name? Joe, Joe Burnett. Yeah, Joe. 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 What do you think about having like a, a pickup place, like you have paints and solvents and, you know, certain pickup places you just bring your tvs your appliances to one place <clears throat> and then dpw before they actually put it in the woods yeah I, make yeah, that I, public i i, I don't I'm, I'm throwing this out because yeah. i i just i came here tonight yeah because of of, of john okay. <laughs> that's great week. that's great <laughs> right? and 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 i've been here in this community for 21 years all right so I, I don't, uh, Karen, I, I don't have any answers right now, but as I listened, that's why I, I, I was somewhat rude in the back saying, hey, do, nope. does the public get to that's speak? Great. I've never been to, to this forum. So for me speaking out, it was, okay, so now you got me. Now you're gonna <laughs> see me, right? <laughs> the, 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 the first and third you're Wednesday of every one week, right? To review this chapter. Yeah, yeah, just so I can follow up with the trash. All right. no, you're, great. But I'm glad you spoke because we, we've talked about this over the years. And in fact, the, t the DPW will take stuff from dumping and they won't charge for it as long as we arrange it ahead of time. Right. But we've done this in the past. And it should be done more frequently. And you, there's a lot of good ways to do it, as you say. Take pictures, identify it. And there's a ton of people around town who are volunteer or vendors who would be glad to help. But you got to put a plan together. But oh, you're right, absolutely 100% right. All right, well, thank you. Great, thank, thank you, you very Joe. much. Thanks, Joe. <clears throat> Is there anybody else from the public that would like to comment on yes. solid and hazardous waste? <clears throat> Lynn Barbie, Surf Drive. Um, I'd take all of my garbage recyclables to the transfer station. But I also take my food compost there. And I'm really glad that we have now food compost. However, it's a really not a very inviting process because 
right. If it's been raining or if it's cold, it's in a puddle, there's ice. The location where those two big bins are is, th there was, one of the, the little shed blew over and then they rebuilt it. But they could make it a little bit more inviting for people to actually put their food compost in there. Um, sometimes they do have three bins, which is good because they do fill up. But that little shed makes it much more difficult than it would have to be and much less inviting than it could be for people to just say, yeah, I'll go throw my, you know, my vegetable shavings or whatever there. So if we could have a slight improvement in the transfer station of where the how the food compost is managed, I think um, I would also suggest we do a real push to because the the organics are way too there's too much of that that goes into the the landfill and we want to get people to change their habits so make it a little bit more conducive and maybe you know even start some stuff in the schools talking to the kids about how you re recycle f the um, the food waste thank you yeah because I do think unfortunately it, it, it looks like an outhouse. You know, it, does, it, really it does, it does. And by, you know, organics is the heaviest part of trash. Food but is the heaviest part of trash. If there's, ra if there's rain or if it's, yeah. if it's icy, it, it, you, you wade through a puddle to get <laughs> to the bin. So it's, yeah. yeah I think good. it's 30% of our waste stream. Yeah, I know. It's and one of the heaviest part of trash, right? Yeah. It really is. So, um, and I just want to let, uh, you know, Joe and Lynn know we are going to be issuing a survey very soon for the local comprehensive plan. I believe the last section of the survey is, is a comment section. So um, it'd be great if the, I know Evan wrote it down uh, here, but also if you can remember to put those suggestions in that survey, um, that, that would mean it, we would not lose those comments because the consultant will see them. <laughs> so. All right. Um, anybody else from the public at this point? Okay. Uh, next assessment, uh, human services. All right. Um, so this assessment was of the 1998 chapter, but also of the 2012 update that was, was indeed adopted by the planning board, but never accepted by town meeting. But the, uh, we took both into consideration as I did this assessment. But again, the goals, we'll start with the goals. Um, for human services. One, to protect and improve the physical, mental, and emotional health of all Mashpee residents. Two, access for all town residents to a full continuum of health and human services, including social and leisure activities. And three, collaboration and cooperation between the public, nonprofit, and private sectors in Mashpee to develop a common understanding of health and human service needs, priorities, and appropriate resource allocation. I completed this assessment by first providing a questionnaire um, that we designed, we, Alex and I, before he left, um, designed from the action plans defined in the 1998 and 2012 update, and um, provided that to the Human Services Director, Gail Wilson, and she provided responses, and then I subsequently met with the Human Services Committee, which I found to be valuable. Um, in many ways, this assessment that I provided to you is more narrative and provides a bit of a history of the department, um, but also gets at uh, some of the higher priority goals uh, and actions. Um, I noted that between 1998 and the 2012 update, you know, many of the actions defined in 1998 carried over almost identically to 2012 with a few additions, um, which I'll, I'll try to parse out of my uh, memo to you. Um, but ultimately, looking at 1998, there was a critical focus, it seemed to me, that revolved around you know, workforce preparedness and providing access to education and workforce training for those who um, may be more heavily impacted to barriers to entry, such as single mothers. Um, these programs were run in coordination with service providers and contractors and uh, we entered into contracts between those providers and the town. Um, one such goal to accomplish, you know, getting, uh, you know, marginalized populations into workforce training 
was to provide both childcare and transportation services to residents attending those tra trainings or education programs. Uh, for this purpose, the town had maintained a contract with Cape Cod Child Development, um, who provided some of these services. But recently, I want to say within the past two years, uh, Cape Cod Child Development closed. Um, and to date, that, that needs gap uh, hasn't been filled. Um, the Human Services Department, in coordination with the Human Services uh, Committee, um, contracts with service providers and, and assesses funding levels you know, pursuant to need. Um, it's my understanding that representatives from various providers attend human services committees to discuss their the services provided and, and evaluate needs gaps as they arise. Um, you know, for example, upon, after the closure of the Cape Cod Child Development, uh, the committee determined that the need for food access and financial assistance that was previously provided by Cape Cod Child Development could be filled with contract amendments, increasing service, excuse me, increasing funding provided uh, that was formerly provided to Cape Cod Child Development and has since amended contracts with St. Vincent de Paul and the Falmouth Service Center to kind of fill those gaps. Um, there was a, a goal of, in 1998 that carried over to 2012 of, of accessing service-related grants and grant monies, uh, but they have not been heavily sought and received in the past. I think um, that is likely due to limited capacity in the Human Services Department. Um, Gail has sought and received one grant within the past few years that was specifically for the benefit uh, of the Substance Use Task Force, and it was a small grant offered through the Barnstable County Substance Use Coalition. This was in fiscal year 2020 for a, uh, the department received funding for renting a film called If They Had Known, uh, and for the Reading Towards Recovery Initiative. This was for purchasing of books for children whose parents, is, whose parents are struggling with substance use disorder. Um, Gail, Wilson, Director Wilson noted that future funding priorities, priorities and funding opportunities that would assist with direct financial assistance to struggling residents would be her priority. Um, there was a goal in 1998 of expanding the DARE program. Mm -hmm. It's like, a, reminds me of my childhood. Mm -hmm. um, uh, cool t-shirts, but the DARE program hasn't been around in Mashpee since 1999. Uh, education around substance use and prevention, however, remains ongoing between the department and service providers, including the Mashpee Police Department. Um, we had a discussion with the committee about child care and child care vouchers, um, and vouchers are available to qualifying families through a contract that uh, the Human Services Department maintains with the Child Care Network. Uh, but one thing I wanted to understand when we met with the Human Services Committee was whether or not since 1998, the number of available vouchers uh, has grown as we know demand continues to increase and that number has remained stagnant. So we see demand continuing to grow, but the number of available vouchers has not. Um, uh, there was a Head Start program, and I would need to refer back to the LCP to understand what that is. I can't recall, I apologize. That was formerly run by Cape Cod Child Development, but is now run by the YMCA and that program has not been expanded, but was a goal of expanding that program in 1998. Um, so Gail started as the director in 2008, and her primary focus has been on counseling for the underinsured and un uninsured, and she currently provides mental health consultation and referrals to uh, service providers in our area. And there was a goal in 1998 that carried over to 2012, um, losing my place here, uh, to maintain a, um, uh, a list of services which is on the website, but they've also maintained a contract with the Visiting Nurses Association that is geared toward providing wellness programming, specifically for seniors at the senior center. There was, have, was a goal of a, a multi-service center, establishing a multi-service center to provide essential living needs to residents such as food, furniture, clothing, uh, et cetera, that is, to my knowledge has never been established, although we do have a thrift store. Uh, the department, there was a goal of main, uh, having the department maintain involvement with the Cape and Island Suicide Prevention Coalition. 
Um, Gail, the director, used to serve on the board, and she still receives their new letters and pertinent information, but that's kind of the extent of uh, the department's involvement with that coalition. Uh, but a, a, a goal of Director Wilson is to continue community education around suicide prevention and the assistance and resources available. And kind of lastly, um, a goal between 2012 and the present was to establish a hoarding task force. I'm not sure if hoarding was a salient or relevant issue um, in town, uh, but it started in approximately 2008, actually prior to the 2012 upstate, uh, update and carried through 2015 and it was with Gail, uh, I wrote myself, I mean Gail, uh, and the former Council on Aging Director, Lynn Waterman, and the members were composed by uh, the health agent, former health agent, Glenn Harrington, Darlene Perkins, Tara Carline, these are police officers, former Fire Chief Rulo, uh, current Fire Chief Jack Phelan, uh, Ebony Steele, and I'm, I'm not sure who that is, I apologize, uh, the Town Nurse and the Visiting Nurses Association, and the, there was a goal of establishing a hoarding protocol at the town that was the deliverable of, of this task force, and they did develop a hoarding protocol. Um, lastly, the, there was a goal of the 2012 update for the department to develop a evaluation system for providers that they contract with, um, and they did adopt a, an evaluation system, and that system was revised again in 2018. Um, I feel like I've generally covered most of the assessment. Everything else is generally historical in nature, but if you have any, any questions, I'd be happy to provide it. The, um, the meeting we had with the Human Services Committee, I think, was a valuable one, and it feels a little bit farther in the past than yesterday, but um, um, I think we got a lot out of it and can certainly build on, on what we, we discussed. I think I jumped in on that. You sure did. Um, any comments from board members? Um, a lot to be done. Head Start. <laughs> Michaela, do you do you know what Head Start is? Would would you would you mind coming up and explaining? Because I know it's super duper uh, important, um, but I don't want to misspeak. So, anyways, introduce yourself, your address, and uh, Michaela Colombo, uh, Meadowbrook Road. Head Start, um, if it hasn't changed over the past few years, is a federally supported program um, for four-year-olds, preschoolers, uh, who come from economically disadvantaged families to ensure that they're up to date, up to speed, they have enrichment um, before they enter kindergarten. Okay. So it's pretty much, it's four-year-olds and there's an income level and it's federally funded. Yeah. Thank you. Right, and so, um, because, right, so uh, Cape Cod Child Development went under and that was a huge blow to the Head Start uh, program on the Cape. Um, it is, it, you know, the YMCA stepped up to the plate after a gap, I don't know, of six months or something like that. But it used to be in satellite towns, right. and now it's centrally located. And so. Head, Head Start is, is that full school year program, and it's usually five or six hours a day. So it's a, it's a full service program for it's, kids. It's, it's very effective. Yes. That's right, yeah, okay. Thank you. Anybody else from the uh, public would like to comment on human services? Thank you, Evan. I think the human service chapter could be the whole LCP. It's so comprehensive. Um, OK. Uh, onward, draft survey. I uh, met with Ashley this morning, uh, and really our conversation centered around when we will have the survey available in SurveyMonkey and when you will be able to beta test it. I was told early next week, Monday or Tuesday, they're gonna send me a link, I'm gonna send it to you, and we'll ask that you send it to five of your favorite peeps to <laughs> beta test it at your discretion. Um, so I will follow up with you on the survey early next week with a link. And then what happens is they erase all that data, right, and so your peeps can take it for real once we launch. So. Yeah, what, what, I'd, what we'd really love to know, uh, both for board members who beta test it and folks you send it to is, do you understand the questions? How, right. long, how long is it taking you? Yeah. What, what didn't make sense or, you know, what, what, what wasn't functional? What was clunky? We really just wanna know what your experience is so we can tweak it before we release it. Well, uh, on the beta, will it be, you know, question, you know, will there be a capsule of what you just said so they can 
prod themselves to. I will develop some copy so that you can provide that to the people you send it to. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah, if you yeah. you got to do this online. Yes. So is there space to enter your comments that I didn't understand question three, or there should be another question that addresses this, which is not addressed? Is there room to add? So usually with beta testing, they don't. They don't. They, no. Uh, you're going to have to give the feedback in writing, either, in either through another survey link or as an email, because mm -hmm. they want you to go. It's it's like go right you, you want to go right through it. And so if you're putting stuff, if you're taking stuff out of it afterwards, then you have to beta test it again. So you you so, do want to prompt them with questions. Yeah, you know, here's what we're trying to here's what we're trying to assess, so they can keep a pad of paper or something next to them. Yes, correct. Yeah. So do you think that will work, Rob? We have to do the same thing. That's you'll all. give us something we could pass out to our five. I'll produce some copy, and you can you know either send it via email or print it out and hand it along yeah. to okay. whoever Great. you'd like to share it with. Thanks. I think I think that's mm -hmm. what Ashley and Evan need us to do. So that's great. All right, uh, workshops. What's going on? Next week, Wednesday, um, seven thirty in the morning to nine, I believe. I'm holding another uh, business coffee hour at the library this time. Um, I believe it was in the ch chamber's most recent newsletter. I've um, made a flyer. I'm handing it out to some business owners. Um, so just coffee and a donut, kind of a candid conversation similar to what we did last time. Um, I can't recall. Maybe that was June 1st, something like that. Um, it's a relatively informal, again, uh, but just trying to dialogue with the small business community. That's next week, August 24th, um, September 11th, I do believe, Okay. for the tribe. Um, I did discuss with Ashley and Blake a general format this morning, and I want to I wanna catch up with, uh, we, with you and any other board volunteers who are going to be participating in that day. Again, I am unfortunately on vacation. I'm a little disappointed that I won't be at this event, but um, um, I want to make sure everyone who is up to speed on what we're proposing kind of in terms of the format and framework and... And, and discussion to be had at the tribe. We have a plan. We have a planning board meeting before this. Yes, if, we do. Right. Okay. And I will be here for that. Okay. Okay. Good. So let's target that date to go over everything. Check your schedules. We need facilitators, subscribers. We we have people from Western and Samson coming down, right? Yes, we do. Ashley and Blake. Correct. Um, and so uh, if you can facilitate a table, uh, let's do it. Um, and we're just going to be really flexible. Uh, uh, breaking out in tables might not be what uh, happens that day. If the tribal citizens want to go into a large circle, then we'll do that. You know, anything, whatever, whatever they feel uh, is going to work. Yeah, I anticipate setting up something similar to what we did at Southport for the pre-meeting yeah. situation, um, and then doing in the actual agenda item meeting. Um, I'll define a presentation, something short. And then open up to a discussion. And this is at the tribal center. Yeah, it is. Yep. And it's during their uh, general membership meeting, um, which uh, is a Sunday a month at two o'clock. Yeah. So um, hopefully we'll get good attendance. Indeed. Uh, lastly, two virtual workshops. Um, I produced a, a flyer and a draft letter. Uh, for the virtual workshop for parents of school-age children for review by the superintendent and her staff uh, to go home in backpacks on the first day of school to every student. Um, That's great. And shortly, and so I'm looking at the last week in September to host this workshop um, because there are three open houses at the at each of the schools uh, mid in mid-September. I'm going to miss one, so I, if we could... Um, Get It'll be that date. week of the 11th yeah. to the 17th or something like that. If we could have planning board staff a table yeah. just to invite parents to participate in that workshop. Um, and then uh, I'll obviously be available to join you at the subsequent two. But I, I think the last week makes sense because I want to get to each of those open houses um, to kind of remind parents that they got the letter from me and, and that they, we want them to participate and why. Um, and Weston and Sampson will be facilitating that with us. And we can do some like in in workshop 
uh, voting and, and polling and things like that, which will continue to, to define. Um, and oh then, yeah, because you can do you can do polls exactly. Yeah, and then uh, a general virtual workshop like systems workshop. Um, I'm looking at the week prior, so that week of uh, September, like a month from now. I wanted to have at least a month to advertise. I haven't pinned it down yet, but I wanted to propose that to you as the general framework so that I can get a date and advertise it um, and have West End Sampson design the program. Um, I think what we have contemplated is um, you know, just doing a general introduction virtually, uh, setting up, um, hopefully having people register for this event so that we can um, assign attendees to breakout rooms. What my concern is, because we'll do breakouts on like visioning built natural and community systems. Um, but I, you know, if we leave it open, my concern is that everyone who's going to be super interested in one, we'll have two participants in one breakout and 17 in another, and it'll just be a little bit lopsided. So we'd like to have it preloaded, if you will. Um, and so we'll have a general discussion. Um, but for the purposes of efficiency, I think we'll have everyone participate in a singular breakout. Um, so you won't be able to cover every topic, but there's so much crossover. I, I think that's the best way we'll be able to manage a virtual workshop in one go. Mm -hmm. um, so do you think you'll have one breakout session or two? I think, well, it depends how long we want to do this. Um, I was, I was proposing one breakout session okay. for attendees to participate in one focused area and then come back and report. So, so there's obviously so going to be a dialogue be, that ensues so thereafter. Are you going to do a SWOT analysis or are you going to, are you going to do one of the three systems? It, we, we, so if you, we, the, we could do visioning and then the three systems workshops, whereas the, in the visioning breakout, you would do a SWOT. But in the systems ones, you would do the identification okay. of the system and then a discussion of their needs. So this, you'll have four, four uh, rooms to choose from. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Um, and then, again, I, I don't know my phone, but the date, we're looking at the week of the 20th to the 20th, something like that, John? What's 19th. That? 19th through the 20... 23rd. 23rd. That week. Uh, and then, again, the... Parents of school age children workshop the following week. So, are you going to need us to facilitate virtual breakout rooms? I may, but I may have enough Weston and Sampson Thank staff. You. We <laughs> have executed a contract amendment to make sure that we're appropriately staffed for these events. So, and it was specifically for this workshop. So, we may not need you, um, but I will confirm with you if I do. I think that would be a great use of funds is to have Weston and Sampson facilitate the virtual. Uh, yeah, there's the a lot of technicalities with that. Break up, and and they have the technical skills to run the whole Zoom. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Okay. I think that's great. Um, so, are you okay with me choosing the best date so yeah. I can begin advertising these things? Sure. Yeah. I'll let the schools decide what is the best night. But. Right. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're moving on from uh, the LCP. Clean Water Initiative. So at last week's Board of Selectmen meeting, there was a great presentation by Ashley Fisher, our Director of uh, Department of Natural Resources, DNR. Um, and it's that meeting was recorded, so you can you can go to uh, Mashpee TV or the town's website and go to the video archive and, and watch it. And at the end, um, it was a really good presentation, and everybody in the room was really engaged in it. And I think the board of selectmen, were, the select board, was really engaged in, you know, being motivated to uh, get our waters cleaned and where they should be. So at the end, uh, town manager Rodney Collins asked Ashley, what, "What can, what else can we do to help?" And Ashley said, "Bylaws." So. Um, Anyways, so Rodney convened a meeting um, this Monday uh, with different department heads and different, and he, he had mentioned uh, planning. So Karen and I went, Karen and I went, and um, there's something I think in your packet that uh, uh, was uh, my notes to that working group. Also, the, the reason why I was thought it was really important for us to go is is because Karen and Evan are working on a tree bylaw, and I, and we we 
we missed the, I mean, we just starting, we, we weren't ready to submit that in July. And Rodney had said, and I think the board, the slot board kind of nodded a little bit, like we might be able to squeeze some of these in onto the October warrant. So anyways, I, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Evan because he's got a proposal uh, that, uh, um, and I'll let him talk about the tree by law and what, what we could uh, decide tonight to submit to the Board of Selectmen for hopefully for um, inclusion on the October. All right. <clears throat> Warren. Okay. I can't find Mary's notes. So I did like this whole, like I read I our it. subdivision okay. plan, our at the bylaw, and I just like pinpoint, it was like, um, just like a list of things that maybe we could change to protect water. Yeah. Um, I, um, so in my initial email to you all when we were contemplating this, this meeting, first the first things that came to my mind were special permit regulations and subdivision rules and regulations. Um, because A, you, you are the sole decision maker with regard to establishing those rules, and we don't need a town meeting vote for those. So um, we should be looking at our stormwater management requirements of the subdivision rules and regulations and any special permit requirements that live in our, our regulations um, to facilitate uh, better treatment of stormwater, et cetera, uh, before it enters groundwater. Um, but what I have provided to you here are two potential zoning articles that could go on the October town meeting warrant that are kind of proposed pursuant to um, some of the proposals or notes from, from Mary in our discussion. Um, and the first, I kind of put these on my, in backwards, but I'm gonna start with 17427 water quality report. This is the second article on the piece of paper I gave you. I apologize, they're upside down. Um, this is pertaining to requiring a water quality report. Um, Mary had noted on her notes correctly that water quality report is required for residential subdivisions to assess impacts in nearby waters. Um, and she proposed an action of amending the bylaw so that water quality reports are required for all commercial centers and any significant commercial developments as well. Uh, so I took, I went back to the zoning and I, and I reviewed the, our existing language for water quality reporting requirements for either subdivisions or special permit requirements. Um, and I just noted that um, we do capture already um, the, the necessity for the submission of a water quality report for any project that's reviewed by you, the planning okay. board. So that's, you know, any, any multi, you know, any, uh, anything greater than 10,000 square feet where it's a, a mandatory referral to the Cape Cod Commission, any cellular tower, any OSID or mixed use or multifamily project, we already get that. Um, so the proposed action is captured already in the zoning. But I propose, and I'm not sure that this is what you wanna, we wanna do, but if we're trying to be wholly comprehensive, um, what we don't require a stormwater, uh, excuse me, a water quality report for are special permit, all, all the other special permits. So that's special permits for projects that are less than 10,000 square feet outside of the C3 district um, that aren't specifically granted by you. So. Um, your typical small retail facility or um, a restaurant or a contractor bay, some industrial use in the industrial park. Currently does not re require a water quality report. Generally, these are uses that aren't substantial in their, in their flows, um, but still collect stormwater. So we could beef this up, if you will, by requiring those special permits also submit a water quality report. Um, we do capture already the substantial commercial developments, um, but not those that are less than 10,000 or like the, the uses I've already identified. I propose this just to, uh, as, um, you know, kind of in response to what Mary was suggesting here and to be wholly comprehensive. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if it's, it, it, it adds an additional barrier to permitting in terms of, of costs for something that would be neg negligible in its impact to Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Loading. So 
I propose it. I'm not sure it's something you want to do, however. <laughs> um, and then the one on top. Well, let's is, finish with oh. this one. Let's finish with this one. So that's it. That's it for me on that one. You so, say, you say it would be negligible. That the benefit would be negligible. Well, you know, most of the youth, well, in consideration of the cost of having the report done, um, that that's kind of what I'm trying to get at. You know, this isn't something where the where the load is going to be so substantial. We need to assess the potential for nearby, you know, its impact on nearby waters. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking generally contractor bays and contractor yards where there's one employee in the building. So um, obviously, we have stormwater management and stormwater re requirements, which we can do a better job of requiring low impact design requirements, but do we want to requ require the applicant to go through the expense of right. the water quality reports when um, mm -hmm. they're not going to tell us all that much? Um, What's the cost of a report? That I have no idea. Never had to get one myself. That means though you have to dig a well and put the pipe down so they can test the water. And what do they have, if we pass this, is it every year they're gonna have to do this? Yeah, or every I, six I, months. I mean, I think it's. Yeah, I think I think our expensive. I think our current water quality reporting requirements covers those uses and uh, and and developments that you really want it for. Mm. So I think this is above and beyond, but I just mm -hmm. wanted to provide it in response to the comment. Yeah, I think so too. Too much. <laughs> too much. Yeah, I think. Okay. I mean, I, the stormwater management is more fine. important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, for like those bays there. And so, that all right. So let's strike that. But thank you for doing the the double check, and it, it is required for a commercial center. Yeah. So, all right. Um, in the same uh, one seventy four twenty seven point two uh, stormwater management, we recently actually updated our stormwater management requirements as a requirement of the MS4 permit, I think it was like two years ago, mm -hmm. we had to update language relative to uh, including nitri or excuse me, fos phosphorus and uh, as, a, as a chemical that we wanna, as a pollutant that we wanna remove to improve water quality. And then we suggested, uh, suggest the um, implementation uh, to, for, or the use of stormwater low impact development planning and development strategies be encouraged. We propose requiring them. Um, so I, I modified the final sentence to merely read, to better achieve the aforementioned purpose of this section, stormwater low impact development planning and development strategies shall be required. I, I, I'm fine with that. I don't know about anybody else. I think that when it first went in as encouraged, it was kind of a new technology. Yeah. Um, now there's more engineers that are comfortable with it. Our planning board engineer, I'm sure, is comfortable with it. And it, it, it has them introduce. So low, low impact uh, development is things like vegetated swales. It pulls out the nutrients from uh, uh, storm water. the stormwater. Um, there's other things that people use, like uh, submerged wood chips. Yeah. You know, wood chips that are in water, and if the if the stormwater has to filter through them, there's nitrogen removal. Um, and so I think more and more engineers are, are comfortable with it, and I think it's time to make it a requirement. Yeah, it should be, because every little bit's going to help. What we're trying to do is clean up the water, you know. And this will give us a little bit of a head start, because as Ashley said, sewering is now, stormwater is next. Yep. So we'll already be ahead if we put this in now. Any comments? No. Uh, you good as is? Yeah. Uh, you want to take a motion to submit it? Oh, does that, is there anybody from the public? It, I, I think we should take a motion because we're going to submit it to the Board of Selectmen on Monday. Uh, I think tomorrow morning. Oh, why don't you come on up and ask a question? Come every night. <laughs> um, 
once in Jobinet, uh, 27 Gunters Lane. Uh, it, is mitigation planting part of the storm water and, and runoff and development, like required planting? When you cut down trees and you build, is it required to plant so many trees back in that area once you've developed that area? Not yet. Yeah, cur currently <laughs> no. You're saying you're, 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 you want to get ahead. We're already behind because there's already towns right. that require I that type I of. I think yeah. that. Um, some areas do require it. I think Conservation Commission might. They do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they require it our way, down our way. Okay. If you I disturb think that within our tree a bylaw might be heading in that direction. All right. So just listening, it was just a question yeah, that came it's up. It's a good in idea. The, the you got it. Plan things. We're, we're, we're working on it right now. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. no, I like that idea. Have you got anything uh, at all on cost? Cost of? Of, of, of this additional requirement. Um, I would say negligible in consideration of, of, of engineering and, and construction of a conventional stormwater facility. Okay. Yeah, if we I mean, were to, I if we were hear, to take. I want to hear that said, that's all, because that's an issue yeah. that'll be asked. That's right. I think that if we were to tell them to take that water and actually treat it like a wastewater treatment facility, yes, you are talking about a big cost. But this is planning your runoff on your property into vegetated swales over, uh, you know, vegetated areas. No, no, I, just um, want, I want to make sure that comment was on record. That's all. Yep. That's yep. Um, and so I. So I'll accept a motion to submit this to the Board of Selectmen as soon okay. as possible. Second. Second. Is there any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? Okay, it passes. So we're, um, this will be on the agenda on Monday. Uh, the uh, Board of Selectmen have asked for anybody who's put in a, uh, an article to be available on Monday to answer questions. So that's the floodplain bylaw, the amendments to the floodplain bylaw, that, and this. So I think that's the only two we're responsible for. Yes. So if people could come on Monday, um, and I'm looking right at Karen, and um, be available. Evan, you're going to be there, right? Because we might be called, the planning department and the planning board might be called on to answer questions. Sound good? Oh, good to me. All right, great. Let's see. Um, yes, so uh, Chairman's report is done. Town Planner's report. I uh, wanted to provide um, you an update relative to uh, solar zoning. There's a, a relatively new piece of case law that came out of the Supreme Judicial Court back in uh, June um, that, again, caused me to question the adequacy of our solar zoning regulations. Um, in consideration of Chapter 48, Section 3, which is the Dover Amendment, which does not allow us to unreasonably regulate um, solar energy facilities. Um, and so th three years ago or so, um, in my review of the zoning and, and 48, Section 3, I had felt that um, it would be prudent for us to consider modifying our requirements for solar energy systems because it um, we, we limit currently the development of such systems to only the, our industrial districts. Um, and at the time, uh, we did go through performance standards with the board, and we went, they went to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, and, but council then opined at the time that in consideration of 48 Section 3, we were adequately covered. Um, it is my opinion that the, pursuant to this particular piece of case law that that now it changes, and this, this case law is, the, is Tracer Lane 2 Realty LLC versus the city of Waltham. And essentially the- And uh, town council has changed. I, and t I, did, I, did, I did request town council um, review this particular case um, and asked generally if, if his opinion has evolved as a result of the case, and it has. <laughs> um, essentially what the judge has said and ruled in this particular case is that 40A Section 3 seeks to encourage um, the development of solar energy systems. And when you artificially limit the 
potential development of these systems to a land area, a, a ratio of land area in your town that is so insubstantial that it's an effective prohibition. It doesn't seek to encourage, it's, it, it, it acts as a, a, a deterrent to the development of solar energy systems. Uh, in Waltham, uh, they did the exact same thing as Mashpee. They limited solar energy systems to only their industrial districts, which composed about 2% of their overall land area. And since it was essentially nothing, and cons you know, 2%, um, the judge ruled that you know, it, it, it was not an, they were not encouraging solar energy, it was in conflict with 48 Section 3, and the plaintiff uh, won this case. And so Mashpee's industrial areas compose 8% of our overall land area. However, the vast majority of that land area is on Joint Base Cape Cod. And I think for the purposes of that analysis, um, we couldn't use it, you know, as. So, so see, show me. <laughs> you can see here, all this purple. Yeah. This is Joint Base Cape Cod. Oh. So the vast majority of this land is not something we have control over. Right. So I'm inclined to think that um, so, that so 8% the, so is actually far less substantial. Mm. Okay, yeah. And, and further, counsel opine that, you know, whether it's 2% or 8%, an argument could be made that we're not encouraging solar energy systems. And thus, um, yeah, if, if someone were to you. seek um, a permit tomorrow for a large-scale facility um, and go through the process of denials locally, they would win and they would get overturned in an appellate court without adequate performance standards. Um, so what do we do? Um, I would again suggest that we reevaluate our solar zoning and define some performance standards uh, for the siting and development of these facilities, or we can regulate solar energy systems as long as a logical argument is in place that is intended to pre uh, preserve and protect the health, safety, and welfare of the residents of the town. Um, we can restrict it if we can elaborate uh, why the restriction is in pursuit of the protection of the health, safety, and welfare. Now, I don't know what that argument would be, but we need to do one of the two things. Um, and so I just wanted to make you aware of this particular case um, because, yeah, I think uh, we need to modify our, our zoning in consideration of the new case law. And town council agrees? Yes. Yes. Their opinion has it it evolved. That, that you're not going to, you shouldn't be restricting it. So, you know, this, the, the language about unreasonable regulation went into the Massachusetts Zoning Act in like the early to mid 80s. But up in, you know, so that's, you know, 35 plus years. Mm. Uh, that the state or the Commonwealth has operated without a ruling on what determines or what is reasonable. This is the first case that is def that where a judge has ruled on the reasonableness of a restriction. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything? Is there anything that talks about how much, what percentage a town needs to have for commercial and industrial development? No, I mean, council, in his opinion, I um, noted that you know. Whether you know the the percentages, you know, a, a logical arg if an illogical argument could be made that our restrictions are not encouraging solar energy, um, whether it's two percent, eight percent, twenty percent, is is it could be it could be a moot point because um, it, it's not in encouraging. It, it was all about the, that encouragement language. Mm -hmm. um, but I would want to refer again to council's opinion. Right. Too. So, like, if you had if you had a, a a town that has no commercial or industrial zone. Right. Right. All residential. Yeah. Which you, I'm just wondering if a town is allowed to do that in Massachusetts. Um, to not have an industrial zone or yeah, a commercial zone. Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah. It's it's local local rule. I think right. I think you could. Um, I'm in fact I'm fairly you know Weston must have, I feel like Weston is mostly residential. Um, Weston? Weston. Does it every town have some commercial and industrial? Place? Likely they have some. Um, but or business. It would be an expensive place to live from tax purposes. Well, I know. I, 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 so I'm just like, you know, thinking of these extremes. So every, every town has to have a, an adult entertainment district. It has to allow that. Um, hmm. Now, 
What if you allow carports, solar carports? Uh, the, the ruling clearly indicates it's the large-scale facilities. Oh, okay. Like the solar farms. Like medium and large. Like we, we allow that, all of that, and so does Waltham, and we allow it on roofs. But the, the judge's decision uh, clearly calls out um, large-scale large facilities. Scale. And that's because there is a state statute about uh, prohibiting prohibitions to the development of solar power. Okay. So we'll have to try to do that for May town meeting. Yeah, right? we should we should work on that. I just have an input. Uh, yeah, the prohibition and uh, percentages of uh, commercial versus residential. Is there any way <clears throat> of getting a town classified as small town, r rural, that can can evade or e you know, I don't think so. You know, if you define this is a small town, rural uh, town, we don't want large scale solar panels around because it it is to the detriment of the people that live here. If you can, if we can define a, a detrimental impact, uh, and and why and, and why you have to have a, a sound. Reason. It has to be a sound legal argument, otherwise it'll get powered through the Dover Amendment. Um, so. No, I don't think we have an opportunity to evade state statute, but if we can come up with a valid argument as to why the restriction is preserving the health, safety, and welfare, then, then it would stand. Um, but it has to hold legal, it has to pass legal muster. Um, so if we want to go that route, I would, I would want to invite council to meet with us. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a slippery slope. They're putting, in this case, they're putting the statutory protection for local uh, solar energy systems way above land use for education, religion, and child care, which all allow only for reasonable regulations on such matters as bulk and height. So they're they're putting this thing on a very high platform here. Well, it's It'd be very it's, hard to go against it. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the same provision that allows religious and educational institutions to build the facilities that they need to pursue their right. missions. Right. Um, 48 section three is the, Do is the Dover Amendment and, and it is inclusive of the solar energy facility. So we should probably update our zoning. I, w I think it's prudent. So it's, so where, where at a minimum we, we need to increase, so we already have something written. That's the good news. Right. The, the planning board had actually submitted it to the Board of Selectmen, and, and it didn't make it onto the warrant. So we actually have something written. It sounds to me like we have to think about uh, increasing the areas that it's applicable to and yes. resubmit it to the Board mm -hmm. of Selectmen. Yes. That would be my suggestion. So I would, I would send out to everybody what the planning board already recommended uh, for adoption. Um, and maybe a nice map showing where that's allowed. Sure. <laughs> As sure. is. Sound good? Good. Yep. Yeah. You were I'm, ahead I'm, of your time, Evan. What's that? I said you were ahead of your time three years ago. You Writing was on the wall, man. <laughs> 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 All right, so I think that's it for our agenda. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, good.